To find a context-free grammar for the language consisting of strings with more zeros than ones, we began with the rules. But there are strings in the language that can't be produced by these rules, such as. So how can we write rules that allow us to form strings like this? One possibility is to break the string into two parts. This requires introducing some variables. So remember, variables should have specific properties, and it's convenient to think of s, our start symbol, as being a string in the language. So if we break the original string into two parts like this, if we do it this way, the two parts have to be treated identically. So both would have to be strings in the language, and both would have more zeros than ones. But this would mean that the original string would have to have at least two more zeros than ones, which is not actually required in our language. So let's consider. Suppose x is in our language. Our existing rules handle the cases where x begins or ends with zero, begins or ends with a one zero or a zero one, begins with a one and ends with a zero, and begins with a zero and ends with a one. So the only case left is where x begins and ends with a 1. So suppose x begins and ends with a 1. If we split our string into two parts, then at least one part must have more zeros than 1s. So it will be in our language. This suggests some rule like s produces either a string followed by a string of the language or a string of the language followed by some new variable. So again, variables should have specific properties. And again, it's convenient to think of s as a string in the language. So what's the defining property of a? Now, we can't simply let a be any string not in the language. This would allow a decomposition like this. But the problem with this is we need a production rule for a. And the obvious rule, something like a produces 1a, would allow the production of an endless string of 1s. And then we might not be able to concatenate it with a string in the language to produce another string in the language. So instead, let's consider how we might break our original string apart. Since x begins and ends with 1, Suppose we went through x symbol by symbol from the left, corresponding to some rule s produces a s. We could then use this to decide what a should be. So remember, concrete never hurts. So let's take a string that begins and ends with 1 and is still a string in the language. What's a good way to split x into a string a not in the language and a string s that could be part of the language? So let's consider our possibilities for splitting the string into variables a and s. Now, at some point, it's worth noting that the first part of our string must contain as many zeros as ones. At this point, the first part must end on a zero, because our string starts with a one. The remaining part of the string must contain more zeros than ones, and so it's automatically an s. And this suggests the rule s produces a s, where a has the defining property that it begins with one and ends with zero, and it has as many ones as zeros, while s still has more zeros than ones. Since we've introduced a new variable, we have to include production rules for it. Since a begins with one and ends in zero, we could introduce the rule, since removing a 1 and a 0 will still leave a with the same number of 1s and zeros. But remember, we want to think about these variables as having properties, and the property of a is that it begins with 1 and ends with 0. So removing a 1 and a 0 might not give us a string that starts with a 1 and ends with a 0. On the other hand, since a has as many ones as zeros, removing a one will produce a string with more zeros than ones. But a string with more zeros than ones is in our language, and so this would be an s, and we know that a begins with a one, which gives us the production rule a produces one s. <laughs>
and so the context-free grammar for our language with more zeros than ones will be. We can verify this by producing a string like. Now, since we do produce a new variable, we'll have to keep track of things separately. So we can start out by s producing a s, where a is the first part of the string, which has as many ones as zeros, and s is the remaining part of the string, which has to be a string of the language. Now, if we try to deconstruct s, s begins with a zero and ends with a one, so we could use the production rule s produces zero s one, where s is zero zero, then s produces zero s, and s produces zero. We can reduce a, where we had as many ones as zeros, a produces one followed by a string of the language, and then s can be decomposed. 